Double honors to the elders and apostles, great millstone of well. I am not a member, however, I've entered into their labors. Peace and mercy to the sincere brothers and sisters, doing this wherever you are, whatever your life may be. Shabbat Shalom. And of course, uh, in theme and in fashion, what we're going to do is hit a couple of milk scriptures on the Sabbath. All right. Um, have, you know, as, having it be a reminder unto myself first. And um, whoever may see this, this is this, this is something new unto you. Uh, you know, I pray that you're edified and you can take this, you run with it, and grow and uh, improve and do better in keeping the Sabbath. Now, of course, it is not always Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, right? It just had it's when the new moon. The new moon di dictates the Sabbath. The new moon is a new month, right? So the new moon just, uh, dictates that first day, okay, of the month. And then it also dictates when the Sabbath was going to be on that following week, you know, changing from, you know, it could be Monday, Tuesday, last, the uh, last month, and then the new moon will fall in Wednesday, Thursday. So you'll have Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Sabbath on, on that next month. But if you need um, clarification or edification on that, there's plenty. You can type in GMS, Sabbath, things of that nature. Do all of that. And I always point you there. And to do that, because it's good to get into the habit of filling yourself with the word, filling your uh, not only reading but listening to the lessons, doing yours, you know, doing your due diligence and studying, so that way that is in you and you can recall it. And um, if you're given the understanding of these scriptures, why wouldn't you, right? Especially um, seeing as that this won't last. The Bible does prophesy the famine of the word, not only a real, not only not a real, not only a uh, a physical, you know, famine of you know, food and water, but a famine of the word will come as well. And um, one could say that both are equally terrible, right? Because a, a way to go out, not being able to eat, starving to death is a horrible way to go out. But not having any answers, being in the dark, in the midst of a complete terror and anarchy, it's another terrible way to go out. So, uh, you know, let's get some of these, okay? Uh, I really kind of want to focus on uh, a couple of them in Leviticus. And, yeah, well, okay, so let's get it. Let's start with the very first one that pops up. So we'll go Exodus 16 and 23. <clears throat> okay, so this is the Sabbath of Shabbat observed, and it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said unto them, This is that which Yahweh has said, Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. So let's get, I'll finish it and then we'll read holy. Okay, unto Yahweh, bake that which you will bake today. Why? Because you're not supposed to kindle a flame, and we'll get that uh, uh, next. And see if that ye will seethe, oh, seethe that, seethe that ye will seethe, and that which remain overlay up for you keep until the morning, okay, so, we'll do two things, we'll change the Bible, all right, he told them this is what the Lord commanded, tomorrow will be a day of complete rest, a holy Sabbath day, set apart for the Lord, so bake or boil as much as you need want today, and set it aside what is left tomorrow. All right, so right, you're not supposed to kindle the flame. Now we will go and get that word Sabbath. We'll go and get holy, okay? And these are things that we should know, but it's good to just, uh, um, you know, go over them. Atonement, uh, Sabbath. There is a Sabbath year. There's, you know, because or been you um. Let the land rest, right? Or every seven years, you let your, if you have a servant, you let them go free. Okay. So, okay, a day of rest. All right. Holy. Kodash. 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 And. Apartness. Holiness, sacredness, separateness, apartness. Okay. Of God, of places, of things. 
All right, so that is a holy day to be set apart. And what does Deuteronomy 6 and 7 tell you, or 7 and 6? Maybe it's 7 and 6. I think that we were a holy people. All right, for thou art a holy people unto Yahweh thy power. The Lord, or Yahweh thy God, has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Okay, so said Paul, we were never supposed to be, a, uh, you know, you, you do business with the other nations, but we were we were different. All right, again, there you go. There goes that kodash, that holy, set apart, sacred, okay, saint. I wonder what special is. Possession, property, value, property, peculiar treasure, right? And the scriptures did say that we are peculiar people. All right. Now, I'm going to go all the way back. So we got our base, right? We understand what holy is. We understand what set, uh, uh, I'm sorry, holy and what it means to be set apart. Damn, how many did I get? It? Come on. There we go. All right. Remember, in the New Testament, even that man was struck down. There was a man struck down for picking up sticks on the Sabbath. Okay, remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Remember what holy is set apart. You don't do the things that you that you would normally do. Now that is the beauty, and all of these things. That's the beauty of the law. It points out how much we need Yahweh Shai, because we go off and do these things over and over and over and then before you come into the truth you don't know when the real sabbath is so you're doing whatever you want especially if you may be having sex you ain't supposed to do that you made yourself unclean um i know i've been guilty of it we've all been guilty of it that's the need for the blood of yahweh for his sacrifice that we are be that we be covered so the law reminds you of how much you need yahweh um but let me get this before we go on Okay, Isaiah 58 and 13. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy one of, uh, I'm sorry, call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of Yahweh, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasures, nor speaking thine own words. Okay, then shall thou delight thyself in the Lord. Let's get that in the NLT. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Don't pursue your own interest on that day. Enjoy the Sabbath and speak of it with delight as the Lord's holy day. Honor the Sabbath in everything you do on that day and don't follow your own desires or talk idly. Okay, when you think about talking idly, um, it's pertaining to, uh, <clears throat> you know, the speech of uh, profane speech, we'll, 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 we'll say that. And then while we're at it, we'll get what profane means, okay? What it means to profane the Sabbath, how our people did it, how we continuously do it. And again, this is something I am talking to self first and, you know, putting it out there for those who may hear, who may, you know, have the ears to hear. Because um, Lord knows I've gone off. We've all gone off. All right. Um, oh. I don't remember, copulation, I don't know how to spell, ah, we're gonna stay right here, 15, dang it, okay, now, speaking of not having sex on the Sabbath, which again, we have all done, I'm guilty, we're all guilty of it, now that you know, walk in it, and and you know, do what you gotta do beforehand all right clean yourself up and then go into the sabbath all right and if any man's seed of copulation go out from him then he shall wash all his flesh and water and be unclean until the even okay now the woman also with whom the man shall the man shall lie with a seed of copulation they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the even okay so we'll get, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll get unclean. 
first we'll get copulation. We know what it means. Lying, layer, coding, act of lying, of sexual relations, right? So you, you, you shoot some seed in your woman. Unclean. To be unclean, become unclean and pure, right? To become unclean sexually, religiously, ceremonially. Now, you couldn't do any of this when the temple, when the, when the uh, first covenant was established. You know, you had to have abstained from women um, in the book of 1 Samuel when David wanted that showbread um, that he was not supposed to eat, but that's all that was left. Okay, there was common bread for everyone else and then the showbread or the shoe bread for the Levites. Okay, but the priest, uh, and this was when David was running from King Saul, right? He had his men with him, so the priest was like, okay, look. I give you all I got is this showbread. I'll give it to you. But at least have you abstained from women. Okay. And it says it right there. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under the my, under my hand, but there is hallowed bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women. Right. Because it's not wrong to lay with your woman. But ritual or ceremonially, you are unclean. You are supposed to wash yourself. There were certain things you were supposed to do before you partook in things pertaining to the holy temple where we went to worship. Now, how you translate that now is that we are the temple. Your body is the temple. The heathen always wanted to attack our physical temple and tear it down, and they have done it. And up until today, you know, these devils, they want to attack your temple by putting things in your body by way of, of, of needles or, or or medications or, uh, you know, all, all kind of stuff, man. Uh, polluting you uh, or making you profane by what you eat why there is pork in everything okay there is there is abominable foods in everything and that makes you ceremonial, ceremonially unclean that's a hard word to say okay and remember your body is a temple now so we'll, we you know what we uh, uh, is it no ye not I probably have to get it here So that's 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. And since I, I need that, we don't need that. We don't need that. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. We'll go there. And we're going to go up just a little bit. Okay, the body is the Lord's. Okay, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. Right, so there are things that are that you can do that are okay within the confines of the law, but, um, you know, since we are behind enemy lines, uh, they are, they wouldn't be expedient for you to do. They would actually hinder your growth. They would actually hinder you, uh, being able to maneuver this wicked place. Okay. So you can't do them. I E have multiple women. And plus, I mean, it, these women now are nothing but trouble. Most of them. So unless you leave the country, I don't really know what to tell you. Um, secondly, you know, there are wicked things that are punishable by death right then and there. You carry it out. You cannot do that here. Okay, so that's why it means all things. For example, that's what it means. All things are lawful, but they're not expedient. All right, meats for the belly, belly for meats. God shall destroy both and it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for Yahweh and Yahweh for the body. All right. So we'll go, know ye not that your body, okay, know ye not that your bodies are the members of Hamashiach. Shall I then take the members of Hamashiach and make them members of an harlot? And God forbid. And we'll get that. Alright, don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Yahavashai, okay? Um, should a man take his body, which is part of Yahavashai, and join it to a prostitute? Never. Okay, and you can kind of liken that unto um, going into to, to, uh, false philosophy or these other philosophies other than what the truth actually is, what this Bible is speaking out. Um, so joining yourself unto, um, you know, Islam, Buddhism, uh, atheism, Gnosticism, Christianity, all these, you can liken that into this, okay? 
flee fornication. Every sin that man does about the body, but he that committed fornication sins against his whole body. I mean, sins against his own body. And now here's where we want what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of Yahweh, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Okay? Therefore glorify Yahweh in your body and in your spirit, which are Yahweh's. Alright? And that price was Yahweh Shai's blood, the sacrifice that none of us would have been able to do. He was given the spirit. He was made lowly uh, and humble to come as a man and do what he did. And he did it wonderfully and perfectly. And we know because it is recorded. And because if it didn't work, we wouldn't be where we're at right now. Okay? Having this understanding, having the uh, being able to under, uh, receive the Holy Spirit to break down these scriptures and align them with our life. To get back in good graces with Yahweh. Okay. Because no man goes unto the son, uh, Father. But through the Son. And I need that. Yeah. John 14 and 6. So I'll just get it here. Straight to the point, Yahweh said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man, not some, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Plain and simple. He and the Father are on one accord. So you seen the Father, are you seen him as he was telling his disciples? Then you seen the Father. What he want, what I want, is what he wants. I am his representative. That is why he is at. He ascended to or back to the right hand of the Father. Okay. So I says it here. If he had known me, he should have known my Father also. From henceforth, you know him as, and have seen him. Okay. So let's get back. <laughs> let's get back. Uh, what did I do? Leviticus 15? I want to go back to where I was at. I think there's some more. Because uh, I think it's a little bit farther down. Okay. Does she so separate the children of Israel unclean as that they die not in their uncleanness? Okay, so let's get That's what I wanted. I wanted the, the since we're, we're back on clean and unclean, all right? And, um, Keeping the Sabbath holy, right? Not being defiled, not profaning. So we need profane as well. So let's get uncleanness. And I may have, we did get that. Okay, we did get uncleanness. Same thing. Unclean, sexual, or filthy, mass, ethical, and religious ritual. Okay. And you can be made unclean by things. But again, uh, you know, for ceremony's sake or ceremonially. It, you know, sex isn't bad, okay? It's it's it's, all, it's good, it's okay. But you, according to the rules of which the Lord has set up, you are unclean until the evening. So these are things that you're supposed to do, that you're supposed to avoid on the Sabbath, right? You avoid the Sabbath because you keep it holy. Just as um, in times past under that first covenant, um, you were to abstain from certain things keep yourselves clean when you went into the temple to worship same thing okay so let's get uh and i'm gonna get straight to the point here all right so this is ezekiel 22 and 26 her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things and the sabbath is also a holy thing they have put no difference between the holy and the profane neither have they showed the difference <coughs> between unclean and clean and have hid their eyes from my sabbaths and i am profaned among them so let's get profaned first how about we read it here your priests have violated my instruction to find my holy things they make no distinction between what is holy and what is not, and they do not teach my people the difference between what is ceremonially clean and unclean. They disregard my Sabbath days so that I am dishonored among them. And that's the last thing you want to do, okay? Because one of the things that it tells you, um, you know, according to the old covenant, is that you were cut off from your people, okay? And that also helps explain, you know, that jump, and I'm, I'm getting, you know, a little bit far out, but I'll just say this. 
Um, it, it also explains that jump from um, the uh, Babylonian captivity uh, all the way into the Roman captivity in the New Testament. Okay, so the Apocrypha speaks of the Greek captivity that led into the Roman captivity and those Israelite foreigners who did not know they were Israelites, they were cut off, they were not allowed to keep Sabbath, they were not allowed to say who they were, they were not allowed to keep the customs. All right, they were cut off and then you have generations of folks who you know did grew up not knowing they were Israelites by blood but grew up not in the customs okay and that was the big argument about Yahweh Shai bringing those uh, those back into the fold now let's get back to the point that's just something I wanted to dive in really quick but I'm gonna get back to the point um, yeah we need so we read that in the NLT Okay, let's get violated, all right? Do violence, ethical wrong, physical wrong, treat violently, do wrongly, right? Profane, defile, pollute, desecrate. To profane oneself, defile oneself, pollute oneself, ritually, sexually, to be polluted. I'll get that. Okay, so here we are. Make common, defile, pollute. And they say you're supposed to honor, keep the Sabbath holy, make it a delight. Okay, so we know holy and profane. Okay, we got those before. So hopefully, you know, you stick it with me. This is making sense. Normally my videos are no more than 15 minutes and we're pushing 20, almost 22, but that's all right. We're going to get what we're going to get. I believe I've covered what I needed to cover. Uh, there may be one more, I believe. You know what? There is. So we'll go Kindle with uh, that's not it. <laughs> Because remember, I read earlier where it said that you're supposed to cook everything you need to cook prior to the Sabbath. You're not supposed to kindle the flame. Okay. All right. It said for uh, dang it, I don't know, man. Okay, we'll get there in a second. Let me go where Nehemiah. That's what's on my brain fresh, so I don't want to forget that. this here and you gotta love good old internet um, because you can do that boom right call hello you how about you shot as long as it's in you you can kind of figure out and you can type what you want boom all right use this world not abuse it right <laughs> and this is a small instance but use it use these things to your advantage Exodus 16 and 13 so we'll get it here don't want to make sure I get everything that I said that I did um, that I mentioned because I mentioned a couple things that didn't go to the scripture so I'm gonna pull them up as I remember Sabbath restored right uh, we can let me see that's what I wanted here just to pull up to show that that's that same definition all right, uh, profane or profanity, or profane the Sabbath, right? To profane is be outside the temple. You could not enter the temple if you, you know, do profane things if you were out. That made you unclean. Same word, right? Same, same, same. And for the sake of reading, we can read it, right? We'll start at 15. I believe we need to read it. Let's see. Uh, trading wine press on the Sabbath and bringing in sheaves. All right, lading asses and also wine and grapes and figs and all manner of burdens. Okay, which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, and I testified against them. Um, in the in the day wherein they sold victuals, right? You know, buying and sell. You're not supposed to conduct your business if you are, and that's here. We're we're talking about here and now. If you are not able to do that, then okay, do what you got to do. 
But if it is in your complete control to avoid these things, it would behoove you. It would be in your best interest to avoid these things. All right, certain things you got to get. Sometimes you may need to go to the store, get you a sandwich because you ain't got no food. You're kind of hungry. Um, you may not be able to fast that day. Buy you something to eat. Don't cook. Right? Um, there dwelt men of Tyre and therein which bought fish and all manner of ware and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, What evil thing is this that ye do? And profane the Sabbath day. Okay? Did not your fathers thus, and did not our God bring all this evil upon us, upon this city? Yet ye bring more wrath. <laughs> Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. And that is a, another historical thing that our people have done. Go off, cry for help, Lord delivers, we go right back off again. Continuously. Okay, thus the need for an ultimate, once and for all, sacrifice. Perfect, without blemish, without blame. Whole in the law. Yahweh Shai. So now you can repent and you can do your best to turn from whatever you did before. Wherever you messed up, you walk as fast, or you run as fast away as you can, you know, spiritually, of course, from that act that you did. You repent. You should feel bad. You should be sincere, knowing that you cannot complete certain tasks in this body, but you better do your damnedest. You better try hard. You'd be surprised what the Lord will, will know, you know, how much strength, how much more the Spirit of the Lord will give you if you take that first step forward and try to. Um, um, abstain from things that we're not supposed to be doing you know if you don't know you don't know but when you do know you need to walk away from it right then and there pray on it fast about it whatever it is you need to do but you would be surprised and then you're going to fall of course you will fail but you get back up you get on that horse and you ride so to speak you repent you ask for forgiveness Pray to the Lord that he don't <laughs> execute that judgment on you, right? Because according to, you know, the ways of our people, according to what we are, should be doing, okay? That these are things that are punishable by death. Certain things that we do are punishable by death. And you walk proud and thinking the Lord won't do anything or thinking, oh, it'll be all right. Okay, you, that's a dangerous game that you're playing and that is a thin line you are treading. Personally, I wouldn't play that game, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Understanding what can come upon you. Alright, so. What else did I get? What else did I say? Exodus 16 and 13. Because I did um, mention not cooking on the Sabbath. Let's see. You have heard the murmuring, sorry, it came to pass that at even the quails came up, covered in the camp, and the morning dew and lay around the host. Uh, no, that's not it. I have to get that before. Okay, yeah, maybe this is it. Twice as much bread, yeah, we, I, I read that earlier. Okay, bake it, seed it, we read that. Okay, all right, Moses said, eat that today, for today, so the, the food that was laid today, all right, for today is a Sabbath unto the Lord, today he shall not find in the field, right, because, uh, you know, the quail, you know, the Lord was providing food while they were in the wilderness. Uh, six days shall ye gather, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in there shall be none. Even though Moses told them, they still went out and looked. <laughs> I, I, what I'm looking for is you should not kindle a flame. And we can end it after that, but I can't uh, end it unless I get it. Whosoever works on this, how we put the don't even. Dang, okay, it was 35, Exodus 35, I don't, 
I don't know why I look down here. Okay, Exodus 35 and 3. And so we'll get that and then that'll be uh that'll be the video. Sabbath emphasize, right? And you see the, the pattern here, right? Because our people need to be reminded. We all need to be reminded over and over. Especially when there's something important. The Lord will footstomp that over and over and over. We are keep reminded. Okay, Moses gathered the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words uh, which Yahweh have commanded that ye should do them. And again, you know, we have the same six days shall be work shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you a holy day, a Sabbath of rest to Yahweh. Whosoever doth work uh, therein shall be put to death. Ye shall kindle no fire through your habitations upon the Sabbath day, right? You ain't supposed to cook. Light a fire in your homes. No, I okay. And then it told, and we've got where it uh, talked about there was no quail to gather, or you cook what you needed to cook, seize what you need to see, seethe or boil, bake what you need to bake, because you ain't doing it on the Sabbath, right? So, these are just certain things I wanted to grab pertaining to, um, you know, keeping the Sabbath holy. Um, if this, some of this is new to you, I encourage you to go into some more. Alright, read through all of it as much as you can. Uh, do your best to walk right. Do your best to utilize the tools that you have while they are available. Okay, seek the Lord while he may be found. This is how you seek him. You read through these scriptures and you seek his ways and you do them. You keep them okay of course you are saved by grace and faith but you are still commanded the law is a way of life it tells you what is right and what is wrong and it is a show of faith it is a way you seek the old paths okay because this is the way to life and if you are you understand this world it is complete opposite it is this is a death culture a death society the West is so okay I've said enough um, prayerfully you were edified and shalom on